Sounds like someone breaking in. It's just a storm, Dick. Sit down. Oh, my God! It appears the Pentagon has been breached. Zombies. Gentlemen, at times like these, our capacity to retaliate must be and has to be massive to deter all forms of aggression. Gentlemen, lock and load. Viva la revolución! Any last words, Mr. President? Yes, Jack. Any superlative words of inspiration for our humble troops? Do not pray for easy lives, my friends. Pray to be stronger men. Power level critical. Greetings, fellow Major zombie slayers. Sleepy Jim with a high round strategy guide solo uh, for go the map the 5 switch? in Black Ops Zombies. And the first thing you probably want to do is some uh, vandalism of government property here in uh, smashing the windows. And uh, that way you can board them up uh, without having to wait for the zombies to do it. And it's a little bit of an unusual map in that there are six uh, openings that zombies can come through in the starting area instead of the usual four that we get on a lot of the maps. And uh, as you can see, it's also a map in which you have uh, different playable characters in uh, JFK, Castro, uh, Richard Nixon, who we're playing as here, and uh, so forth. And uh, that was kind of a fresh, uh, a fresh approach to take, and uh, one that I thought was uh, quite welcome. Uh, of course, we don't want to get rid of our favorite characters of Nikolai, Dempsey, Takio, and uh, Rick Tofen, but occasionally it's good to play as someone different. And of course, we got that in uh, Call of the Dead as well, uh, with uh, you know Buffy and whatnot. So I'm just trying to maximize my points as per normal in these early rounds. Uh, in this particular map, the uh, first objective I have is to buy Claymores as soon as possible. So that's the reason I'm maximizing my points at this stage in the game. Now I'm letting the zombies in here so that I can uh, get more power-ups because uh, you won't get the power-ups if the zombies are killed behind the barriers. And you can see I just got the nuke there. Not exactly the power-up I was after. I was uh, more after a max ammo or double points, but you take what you get. Especially if you're stabbing them, uh, you've got no choice but to take it. <laughs> I'm getting pretty low on ammo here in the pistol, so what I'll do is uh, wait uh, until I'm uh, nearly out, and then I'll go straight through the door and open up the hallway area. Gotta get real intimate if I don't find ammo. And uh, I always buy the MPL here. It's a really good early round weapon. It's got a fast reload on it, uh, and you earn quite a few points by using it as well. You get lucky here and get an insta kill. So go to town a bit here with a knife. Gotcha. Zedhead's dead. Gotcha. And I'll just open up the uh, elevator at the back of the hallway what here. That gives nonsense. me an escape route if Where I get uh, overrun by zombies, and we'll need to open it for later anyway. Dead. And uh, moving on to round four here. Now this map is quite uh, a challenging map. The uh, area that you have to run around in is quite narrow and constricted. Uh, you will get up close and personal with the zombies. You will take a few slaps from them at various points during the game, for sure. Uh, some people don't like the map for that reason, in that it's a little bit hard. Um, but uh, you know what, I enjoy a challenge and I really like playing this map. Uh, when I get the opportunity. And uh, interestingly, I saw an interview with Jimmy Zelensky, who's the zombies creative lead for Treyarch. And in that uh, article, it said that basically the map 5 was intended to be a little tougher and intended for players 
who wanted a challenge, and I think they did that really well. Out of all of the Black Ops maps to date, uh, it's probably the hardest map, although it's still not uh, in the same league as Nakdor and Tote in terms of difficulty, or uh, perhaps even Varukt for that matter. Oh, I'll take it. So I've got enough points now to go downstairs and uh, take the elevator down. And I'll buy the barriers uh, to access the uh, war room here and go through to the service elevator. And uh, into the laboratories. And as I said, uh, my first objective is to buy claymores, so we'll do that. And uh, they're right at the end on the right in that room with the uh, pig. And uh, a lot of players feel it's bad luck to kill the pig, so we'll leave the pig well alone. And grab our claymores here. Now, the reason I'm buying claymores is uh, because in this map, a unique boss round occurs every five rounds or thereabouts, which is the uh, Pentagon Thief. And he's like this old scientist dude, and what he'll do is he'll chase after you, and he'll uh, steal whichever weapon you're holding at the time. Now, what you need to do is kill the Pentagon Thief before he can take anyone's weapons. And if you do that, he'll drop a max ammo, which is the regular power-up that he drops. But he'll also drop a bonfire sail, which is a power-up unique to this map. And what that does for you is, it will give you uh, the ability to pack a punch your weapon for only a thousand points instead of the normal five thousand points. So if you pack a punch both your weapons, you're saving out eight thousand points. So it's pretty uh, sweet if you can do that. And what I'm doing with the claymores, getting back to that, is I'll plant them along the catwalk area and save them up there. Uh, and what I'll do is when the thief comes, I'll quickly lay them out along that catwalk area and I'll wait there for the thief who will come chasing after me along the catwalk and uh, the claymores will kill him. Now in solo, and you can see I'm just planting the claymores here facing the wall so they don't get uh, blown up by any zombies to come along. Now, uh, in solo it takes 8 claymores, minimum, to kill the uh, Pentagon Thief. That's without shooting him at all. Uh, I have killed him once with only 2 claymores side, side by side, and uh, I've never been able to uh, replicate that, so I'm not sure how I did that. I did give him a burst to the face at the same time he hit both of them at once. But in any case, 8 cl claymores in solo, you'll dead set kill him every time. Now. If you're playing in co-op with several more players, it will take much more than 8 claymores. But if everyone cooperates and buys claymores and lays them there, uh, you should be able to do it as well that way. Now, I like to camp at this end of the hallway for as long as possible when it's fairly important to keep those two windows on either side of you, you closed as, as much today. as you can. Now when you get overrun what I do is go down the elevator and basically we'll start killing zombies from below here and when, when I get overrun like again mine. I just go straight back up the elevator and go up and down like that and uh, while it does cost you points to get to use the elevator this is a pretty good tactic to use early on if you don't have jug or if you get stuck uh, and everyone in, in your uh, squad is down, if you're playing co-op, you can uh, use this as a What's last resort tactic as well. Did you see that, did you? Anyone? Damn it! No cardoodle do! So uh, as you've noticed, what I've done is bought the MP5K from down below and the MPL uh, from above near the starting area there. And that gives me the ability of when I run out of ammo in one, I can take the elevator up and buy uh, ammo for the other weapon if I need to and vice versa. So it's a pretty good uh, tactic to use so that uh, you've always got plenty of ammo 
And uh, you want to keep ammo in both weapons wherever possible uh, in case you need to switch. Now when you go for ammo you'll nearly always see one zombie just waiting near the uh, MPL and also down below the MP5K. So just be ready for him. Uh, it will still take the other zombies time to spawn in usually. And I'm talking about solo here, sometimes it works a little bit different. Up. You might have a whole heap of zombies waiting up there for you if you come up in co-op. Come on, this is making a mess. So I'm trying to defend those two windows and keep them closed because once they're open, we'll need to use the elevator. Otherwise, zombies will come uh, running through there. Hello. And uh, surround us pretty quickly. So even though I've got a uh, insta kill there. I don't spend too much time upstairs because even with an insta kill, if you get trapped by the zombies, you will get down, of course. Now I know I'm near the end of the round here, so uh, what I'm going to do is head down to the lab area, and we've got enough claymore saved along the ledge for the Pentagon thief when he comes. So what I'll do is turn the power on now, and that'll also let me buy Juggernaut. So the power's on, we've turned on all the perk machines, are teleporters are on as well, Security lockdown and uh, usually when you turn the power on the Pentagon Thief will come in the next round, but sometimes he'll take uh, one or even two rounds after that to uh, appear. So have a quick hit at the box here, because uh, if I do get the bonfire cell I want to be able to pack a bunch of decent weapons. They smell worse than a checkers punk. And this map does have a few, not many, but it does have a handful of the uh, Nova 6 gas zombies from uh, Kino as well. But uh, there's hardly any of them, and usually they're only around the uh, laboratory area, so you can't really use a tactic where you're shooting them and they'll kill the uh, regular walker zombies like I, I do in Kino, and you'll see that in the Kino series that I do. So I'm just finishing off uh, the last part of uh, round 6 here, getting a few extra points from the windows, and uh, I'll also go and grab Jug as well, no and uh, then we'll be ready for round 7 in the next part of this video series, part 2, to be continued. Oh, I feel good now. 